Horseshoe theory is a political concept that essentially says the further right and the further left you go, the more you tend to circle back. The intention is to draw similarities between what is perceived as the far right and the far left. Now, I don't believe in a political spectrum that looks anything like this. However, I have noticed the very strong similarities between these people in the far right and far left. People like neo-Nazis compared to people like communist tankies. Communists who become sympathetic to ethno-nationalism, ethnic cleansings, genocides, or just try their hardest to cover these things up. They engage in very similar argumentation as Holocaust deniers when talking about things like the Ukrainian famine. And that's exactly what I want to talk about today, the Holodomor. There's a few different arguments that communists use to try to say this never happened, or that it did happen and it wasn't the Soviet's fault, or that the Soviets even tried to help the Ukrainians, which is quite ridiculous. So let's dig into some of these claims. I'll mainly be drawing from a video that Hakim posted, which is now unlisted, but I was able to get my hands on a link. It's quite obvious the reason why it was unlisted. These videos, justifiably so, get about the same amount of hate as Holocaust denial videos sometimes. Hello! Today I'm going to talk about the Holodomor, the famine that occurred in Ukraine during the early 1930s. Particularly, I'm going to talk about why the mainstream narrative that's used to paint it as a man-made famine is flimsy at best. If you're not familiar with this narrative, it kind of goes like this. Stalin engineered a famine in order to crush Ukrainian nationalism. Now, this is kind of taken for granted by, well, everybody. It's never really analyzed all too well. And why should it be? If this were disproven, then the entire argument of the famine being man-made would just boil down to Stalin orchestrated this famine just because, which is ridiculous and would lead people to look at other, much more plausible explanations such as massive droughts, wheat rust, sabotage by kulaks, etc, etc. Now, firstly, where did this so-called man-made famine occur? If it really was intentionally made to break the back of Ukrainian nationalism, then the Soviet authorities would have logically limited it to only Ukraine. Unless there were Ukrainians in other countries, which there were. There was almost a million in Kazakhstan. This number dropped over 36%. Percentage-wise, the Ukrainians had more fatalities than any other ethnic group in Kazakhstan. On January 22, 1933, Stalin wrote a letter. This order was to block starving Ukrainian citizens from fleeing the famine. Meanwhile, other ethnic groups were able to do this. Specifically, over 600,000 Kazakhs were able to escape successfully. Stalin pointed out that the Ukrainians were trying to flee to Moscow. Stalin puts their reasoning, in quotes, as if it's not even true. That reasoning being for bread and food. He claimed that these starving villagers were fleeing for propaganda purposes. So this makes it extremely evident. Not only were the Ukrainians targeted, but they were demonized by the Soviet government. They believed that the Ukrainian nationalists would eventually take up arms and establish a new capitalist Ukrainian government. Let's suppose this man-made famine only happened in Ukraine. It didn't, as I've already shown, but let's just speculate. If the Soviet authorities really wanted to crush Ukrainian nationalism, Logically, they would have targeted the parts where Ukrainian nationalism was strongest, right? Wrong yet again. Many of the areas most affected by the famine were, strangely, parts with a significant Russian minority. Now, why would a supposedly man-made famine targeting Ukrainian nationalists hit ethnic Russians? This part is kind of pointless, honestly. First of all, it's a bit of a bait and switch. He's talking about where Ukrainian nationalism would be the strongest, and then he talks about the population of Russians. Those are not the same thing. He did not prove that these areas were not strong in Ukrainian nationalism. And frankly, pointing out that Russians were hurt by the famine as well doesn't debunk anything. This is just a very, very tiny argument when compared to the mountains of evidence showing otherwise. I can just as easily ask, why did the Russians cover up the famine? They didn't even address that it existed until 1983. Also, it would have been nice if he would have actually given us some data we could read. I found these two maps. The first one is the areas most affected by the Holodomor, and the second is the distribution of Russians in Ukraine during 1926. As you can see, there's really not any sort of strong correlation here, so I'm going to go ahead and dismiss his claim entirely. Something to keep in mind is that there's a lot of talk of Ukrainian nationalism here, but let's just analyze this for a second. Even though there are many ethnic Ukrainians in the most affected areas, many identified Russians as Nasha, meaning our own, 
Many didn't even want an independent Ukraine at all and referred to the Soviet Union as our rich land and referred to Galicia, the center of Ukrainian nationalism, as Poland. This further casts a little doubt on the crushing Ukrainian nationalism narrative. Now, I have no idea if this is true or not because I have no clue where these random screenshots came from. However, let's assume this is true. Does this really change the argument? No, not at all. The claim is that the Soviets did this to crush Ukrainian nationalism. The claim is not that objectively there was large-scale Ukrainian nationalism. This is actually a really gross argument. I mean, imagine just using this for the Holocaust. Hey guys, the Holocaust didn't actually happen because the Jews actually weren't controlling everything, and the Jews actually weren't literal demons. What? All that has to be true is that the Soviets believed these things. And I've already proven that this is true. Stalin himself said that he believed these hundreds of thousands of Ukrainians that were fleeing their starving villages were only doing this to spread propaganda. Now, I'm pretty much done with the Hakim video. It was very short and didn't make a lot of points. Definitely didn't make a single good point either. Now I want to turn over to this popular Reddit post. After poor weather, pestilence, and other problems devastated Ukrainian culture, the Soviet government distributed millions of pounds of food to the Ukrainians. So these amounts are 2,000 tons of oats, 58,968 tons of corn, and 191,646 tons of grain. You can also see here in this very image that the Soviets refused to send additional grain shipments. So we're going to look over how much aid this actually is. Now just looking at the numbers, it may seem like a large amount, but what's happening is people aren't just comprehending how much is actually needed. This aid was only enough to help 20 districts out of more than 600 of them. For scale, the amount of poods of grain that was was 11.7 million, and the Soviets were requisitioning 510 million poods of grain. We know this because of a letter written by Petrovsky, January 6, 1932. And looking back at letters, there's just tons and tons of evidence that this was intentional. So I'm going to link to an archive filled with letters from Soviet officials and with plenty of evidence that the Holodomor was intentional and caused by the Soviets. If you believe otherwise, you are just an idiot. <laughs>